Hi everyone, Mike Mao here. So this is a topic that's considered highly controversial. I know my wife certainly had reservations about me even making this video, but I'm convinced with full-on conviction that it shouldn't be controversial at all, much less highly. I mean, it's something that we need to talk about. And for this not very long video, we're going to talk about it. And we're going to dive into the very simple science that demonstrates that race is a social construct invented by humans based on appearance and not a biological reality. We'll also see how the evolutionary roots of prejudice come prepackaged in our brains and how we can overcome those ingrained biases. I'm personally asking you to keep an open mind for this video and really engage with this information because you never know. It might just crack the very foundation of your entire belief system. Let's imagine three men, two white, one black. They're similar in physique and cognitive ability. The only difference is that one of the white men has a genetic mutation causing a unique, large, and heavily slanted nose. Interestingly, and pay close attention here, this is the simple science I was talking about. The genetic difference between the two white men would be a greater DNA difference than the so-called normal white man and the black man. Yeah there would be a greater genetic difference between the two white guys than the white guy and the black guy. In fact, the DNA difference between the white guy and the black guy is so minute that it's literally inconsequential. Imagine this man with a unique nose lives in a region of the world where this trait provides a survival advantage. I can't think of any reason why that would be the case, but let's just say. In a time when high birth rates were necessary for survival, remember people would have like 10, 12 children or more so that one or two might make it into adulthood. His offspring inheriting his trait would thrive. Over many generations, an entire population with this distinct feature would emerge. We would have a whole group of people in a certain region of this world with this really odd respiratory structure on their faces. The rest of the world would look at them and how different they look and we'd call it a race but it's simply an adaptation to a specific environment. This illustrates how superficial differences can be perceived as profound racial distinctions, when in reality, it's just a small genetic variation with no impact on the rest of our genes or our brains in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. Now let's take a look at evolutionary psychology, my personal favorite of the sciences. This field is a lot of fun to read and it helps us understand how our brains evolved to navigate the challenges of our ancestral time. You see, for 99.999% literal number of human history, we all lived in small tribal groups. Agriculture, permanent settlements, and complex social structures that we have today literally represent 0.001% of our existence. It's only logical to expect our brains to still be wired for that primitive context. And in those tribal times, encountering someone from a different group posed a significant risk. Approaching a stranger who looked different than you could lead to conflict, disease transmissions, or competition for resources. Attempting to befriend this person from another tribe would give a good chance for you to wind up dead. So this fear was necessary, I mean, we got to live. Those who instinctively avoided unfamiliar individuals had a much higher chance of survival. The whole stranger danger response got ingrained in our brains. As a result, our species across the entire globe inherited a tendency to fear those who look different. This is the prepackaged bias that we're born with. And fear, left unchecked, can be a very dangerous path. Because fear, if not addressed through education and understanding, can morph into something far more destructive, hate. When people are not exposed to perspectives that are diverse, they may rely on stereotypes and misinformation to fill the gaps in their knowledge. This can lead to prejudice, discrimination, and even violence. Fear, fueled by ignorance, breeds hate. It's a simple equation. However, the good news is this equation is algebraic, meaning the reverse is also true. Just as fear can morph into hate, understanding can transform hate into acceptance. For those who harbor hate, learning about the science of race and the impact of social factors and the shared humanity of all people can be a powerful catalyst for change. 
-hmm. Now it's crucial to understand that this fear of those that look different is a predisposition and not a fixed trait. In other words, it's not hardwired. Our brains are very adaptable. While we may have an initial fear response, education and exposure can overcome it. Just as different colors on a cat's fur doesn't change its fundamental feline nature, superficial differences amongst humans don't change our shared humanity. And you gotta love cats. And sure, many people with hatred in their hearts for other groups will argue that they don't fear anybody. If this is you, you need to understand that your hatred is foundationally bred out of fear. You can argue and even feel that you don't fear anyone, but that's only in the conscious part of your brain. And modern brain scans have showed that the conscious part of our brains represents only one eighth of our personalities. When people understand that race is a social construct and that our differences are wholly superficial and we're all part of one human family, the foundation of their hate begins to crumble. Education dismantles the myths that fuel prejudice and replaces it with facts and hopefully as a result, empathy. It takes time and effort to undo deeply ingrained biases, yes, but by consistently challenging our assumptions, seeking out diverse perspectives and engaging in respectful dialogue, we can break the cycle of fear and hate. Know this, knowledge is the antidote to prejudice and understanding is the bridge to acceptance. Now, some people will argue that all this can't be true because it's evident that little children don't see color. And well, this is true. But while young children may not initially categorize people based on race, they do notice differences. Research indicates that by three to six months, infants begin to notice race-based differences. By the time they're in school, children start to show racial bias. Now, this isn't due to inherent racism, mind you. It's the brain's natural tendency to categorize and, of course, the exposure to societal biases. This underscores the extreme importance of early education and fostering inclusive environments. I mean, we all want our children to be loving, don't we? Allow me to bring up a fascinating study that illustrates how social factors, not inherent differences, impact performance. In Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, which incidentally is an absolutely amazing read, I cannot recommend it more, he discusses a phenomenon observed in standardized testing in the United States. Typically, at the beginning of the school year, when national tests are administered, children from certain minority groups often score lower than their white counterparts. And many people will suggest that this shows that white kids are just smarter. But here's the key. When they experimented giving the same tests at the end of the school year rather than the beginning, those performance gaps magically disappeared. Across the entire racial spectrum, the results were identical. So why did this happen? Well, it's not about innate ability, it's about access to resources. Partially due to the distribution of generational wealth, many white families have the financial means to send their children to summer camp, day camp, educational programs, or provide an enriching experience during the summer break. This continuous engagement keeps the children's minds sharp and warmed up, if you will. Children with less privileged backgrounds may not have these opportunities, which would lead them into a slight summer slide in their educational skills. However, by the end of the school year, all the children had the same access to education and their brains are equally warmed up. This levels the playing field and the performance differences literally vanish. This powerfully illustrates that when everyone has equal access to opportunity, the apparent racial disparities disappear. It's not about race. It's about opportunity. Okay, no fancy graphics or background for this section. I'm trying to make a more personal connection with you guys in this section of the video. If you're someone that harbors racist thoughts, You'd be surprised with what I'm about to say. I'm not going to judge you. You see, I too had these thoughts in my own heart in my past. It is a very common human reaction amongst all races, but it's just not good because it robs our lives of happiness, which is the whole reason that we live and this life is so very short. And while our brains do come prepackaged with these feelings, remember that it was for the purpose of survival, a type of survival that we no longer need in our human journey. 
We need to appreciate that these feelings are not only not needed anymore and based in fear, but they fundamentally hold us back as a species from prosperity and well-being. And yeah, happiness. History has shown us time and time again that the world is a more peaceful and prosperous place when we all work together. To deny this is to work against your own best interests. And if you're not a racist person, try to understand that we're not going to fix this fundamental human problem, fighting hate with more hate. That just doesn't work. The fact is that virtually all human beings desire peace, love, and happiness. And hate is almost always based on misunderstandings. We have to try our best to understand each other's unique circumstances to find out what those misunderstandings are. Because just like that standardized testing example I just gave you showed a reason for a very peculiar phenomenon, there's always underlying circumstantial reasons for how we feel. Underlying circumstantial reasons that can deceive us and tell us we're different. The reality, however, is that we're not. Additional to all this, hatred requires far more energy than does acceptance. If you shed yourself of these false dispositions, I promise that you will greatly improve your life. Life will be easier. As mentioned already, we all know this life is too short. Why would we want to exert our energy for something that's ultimately superficial? Don't we already waste so much of our lives on hardships and trivial matters? Don't we already work too hard and too long with so little room for enjoyment? Why would we further burden ourselves with more fatigue and more misery? We have the means, ability, and power to overcome these ingrained biases and create a more flourishing, more comfortable, and a much happier world. By educating ourselves, challenging our assumptions, and fostering empathy, we can achieve that more peaceful world. Remember, according to biology, there's only one species of human. There's only one human race. Let's come together and celebrate our diversity and use it to advance ourselves. Let's embrace our shared humanity. We can do it. Thanks for watching my fellow apes. Until next time, stay loving, stay skeptical.